Hey everyone, in this video I'm inking another interior illustration called The Mirror Witch for the Mystic Punk's RPG adventure Crackdown at Ivy Park. I'll be using a speed line technique to show the motion of a punk's face being smashed into a mirror. Also employing a mannerist composition with this one as well, with a weird canvas size and multiple figures. Benjamin Mara here, illustrator and cartoonist. Welcome to my channel where I record my process and give insights about the art projects I'm working on with the hope you'll learn some new techniques and be inspired when making your own art. Here's the sketch I did for the mirror, which like I usually do, I don't refine it to final pencils. I just go straight to the final inks. First, I open it in Clip Studio on my iPad, and I make the sketch about 50% opacity. I'm just doing some outlines here to get the general forms of everything. It's a little bit of an awkward space because it's a one-fourth page illustration, and the Mirror Witch herself is a little cramped in the top portion with her arms out. I wanted her to look like the classic EC Witch storyteller from EC Comics telling horror stories so I want to make sure she's very wrinkled in the face what I often do is with the first part of the drawing I start with the face of one of the main elements just to get a sense of how much detail I want to include in the piece overall it's also a gateway for me to get into the piece I'm working on so I'll do a lot of detail in one form or one character to identify for myself what the standard is going to be what the identity of the overall piece is going to be, what it's going to feel like. I do this for, by adding detail, adding shadow. It's to get a sense of the character of the overall piece, not just this particular character itself. After I feel like I've gotten into it and I know what I want to do with the level of detail and with the identity of the piece, now that I have that firmly in my mind, I can move on to outlining the contours of the rest of the piece. So I just make my way through and on a separate layer over the pencils or the sketch in this case I just start making up information with the ink and figuring out some of the shadows and figuring out where the forms are going to fall it's starting to come into focus a little bit more for myself where the shadows are going to be placed how they're going to interact I, I can kind of see it in my mind already but I like to discover that aspect for myself during the course of the inking rather than trying to plot it out with the penciling so with the faces I just I don't plan too much with those either. I want them to be a little weird and awkward and have a little bit of spontaneity and improvisation when I'm inking them. So I like how this, this girl punk's face is kind of turning out. It's turning out way differently than I expected and that's sort of how I like to execute inks. I like to have things be unexpected for myself. It makes things more interesting for me and entertains me while I'm working on the inks. I'm giving her a bit of a Chelsea haircut here. I want to make sure that these punks definitely look like punks, even though they might not look like the particular classes of the game. I want somebody who's flipping through the book to identify these characters as punks right off the bat, trying to get this character's skull shape to be the way I want it to be and give him some kind of mohawk hair here. Maybe it's a haircut that he gave himself. I used to draw a punk character just as a doodle over and over in my notebooks in school that looked kind of like this guy. It was a profile picture. He was wearing sunglasses in my doodles though and he had a razor sharp punk mohawk. I think the faces and the heads of the characters are a way for me to really identify and get into the rest of the characters and the rest of the forms. That's why I start with them. I feel like if I have an understanding of the character's face and form and who they are through their face, then I feel like I have a better grasp on the rest of the image mentally. I really love drawing hands and it's always fun. I always think about one of my favorite inkers, Tom Palmer, and how he inks hands. So I try to think about how he would do it, try and use the techniques that he uses, the ones that I've studied him using. What I'm trying to do here is create a sense of motion between this punk in two states. It's a bit of a comic book technique where you put the character in two states of motion, almost like keyframes in the same image. 
So he's going to have his face being smashed into the mirror by the mirror witch. The mirror witch is compelling this punk to smash his face into the mirror in a bathroom. So the glass is shattering. I don't want to go too crazy with the glass shattering. You can really just get very obsessive if you want to with how many glass shards you want spraying out from the mirror. But I want to keep it relatively small. But I also want to make sure there's enough to give a sense of the impact of his face going into the mirror glass. I'm just trying to create a spine or structure for the mirror itself and it's going to be bending based on the impact of his face smashing into the mirror. And then I'm adding some cracks around the area to also suggest the mirror being smashed. What I could have done is added a bunch of blood splatter coming from it as well, but I decided not to go that far because I don't want it to be too confusing. I still want this to read pretty clearly. If you introduce too much blood splatter, it just sort of mucks it up. You gotta use it a little sparingly. I decided not to use it at all here. Now I'm adding in the speed lines and filling in the greatest sense of motion between the two states. The two states are sort of when this punk is at a standstill and then the speed lines occupy the space where he's actually heavily in motion. I'm going back through the speed lines with the same pen tool but as an eraser. I also figure that he's leaning forward and I'm using his hips kind of as a fulcrum for this action. But I want the hips to be a place where both of his states are overlapping one another so we can see kind of what he does with his body. He kind of rears back and then goes up and forward. I use the belt kind of as an indicator of this. So now I'm blocking in the sink. The sink is going to really be the thing that suggests that we're in a restroom. I'm just using a really basic shape to get this industrial sink feeling down. It's porcelain, so I want it to have a little bit of a sheen, but also where cast shadows can, can fall. Of course, I put on a little glint of metal to hint that the faucet is indeed made out of metal rather than porcelain. Adding in a few more shards and just tidying things up. Adding some more speed lines. I think I can use it. Now I'm going to go in and draw the other punk. Because this is a party of adventurers, which is classic for any role-playing game, I wanted to make sure that there are some other punks in the room to witness what was happening here. I'm using the stiff nib pen tool from Frendon, which is my favorite nib to use or brush to use. I'm just making up the punk's face as I go through it. I imagine he's pretty skinny, has a long face. I'm just throwing a uh, surprised look for his expression. You can get a lot from a character's eyebrows. I'm using earrings pretty heavily to show that these are indeed punks. And then I want to give him a sort of spiked haircut. I'm going to keep it pretty simple with him. And give him some reflective shadows on one side of his face. Now I'm moving into his hand, and again, one of my inking heroes, Tom Palmer. I'm not sure exactly where the light source is hitting this guy. I might have put his entire hand, or the bottom of his hand, in shadow if I had thought about the light source coming at him from above. But he's also not really a main character, so he doesn't necessarily need to have too much detail on him. He's just there to kind of support the, the characters who is actually having the spell cast upon him. I'm using the shadow across his body as a way to push the foreground character, the main character in the scene, forward. I want that action to be front and center, so everything's really got to push that to the front. It's one of the reasons why I decided to put the lower half of the witch's body, the witch's cloak, in shadow as well. I want to make sure that there's a bunch of shadow that the foreground character can sit on top of. 
The head of the girl punk is actually in kind of a weird spot. Can't really see her body, but I wanted to make sure that there looked like there was three people or three punks in the room with Mirror Witch. It was the best I could do for placement. Again, like the spell itself and its effect is really the main point of the image, so everything really has to point toward it. Now I'm just going in and doing some final touches here, just adding some more detail that I think needs it in certain spaces that I think need some attention. Now that the inks are really sort of locked in, I can go in and put some gray tones in with the screen tones that Clip Studio provides. I did indeed put a shadow on the hand of this punk, but I noticed that it's a gray shadow rather than a fully all black shadow. I just use the screen tones really as a support for the rest of the inks. I don't want them to be dominant. I don't actually want them to be noticed at all. I don't want the screen tones to be forced that the viewer actually can see. I want them to be almost invisible, like they support the image so well that you barely even notice that they're there. Hopefully it gives off a bit of a sense of maybe even color for a black and white drawing. But the great thing about screen tones is you can add so much detail with them without them being totally dominant. This is really just the finishing pass now. And this is the finished piece. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Thanks for watching everyone. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions about what I've been working on or anything I mentioned in the video, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. See you in the next video.